Awesome. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for Forbes for letting us use this. Uh, absolutely, this being spot. Uh, you know exclusive partners of Forbes. I'm uh, just kidding, but you know we we're still here. <laughs> we take advantage. Uh, but yeah, I was just saying that uh, you know these conferences are really great because we get to connect with people that you know live in different cities, different countries, and uh, it's nice to have like the face to face. Uh, so we saw each other in Denver, now we see each other here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really great. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, kind of introduce each other and tell everyone about our various projects. So uh, we'll start with you. Tell me about yourself and about Fio. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Great, great to connect. Always good to see everybody at these events. <laughs> I mean, that's where that's where the magic happens. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Wayne Marcel, I'm the head of growth at Fio Protocol. Um, Long term advocate of driving education in the space and making things easier for people. So a few years ago, I jumped on board with the Fio team. Um, just to really help drive that message where we make sending and receiving assets easy, simple. Uh, we also created a way to, to verify authenticity on NFTs. So and we're, we're, we're mainly, we're not saying, hey, go use our protocol, but we're working on getting our, our protocol everywhere it can be. So initially it was wallets and exchanges, mm -hmm. but now it's really communities and Web3 platforms. And definitely love what you guys are building with s 4 So we definitely got to look into that too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've talked about this a lot in terms of the user experience and onboarding new users. And, you know, ultimately, all our, uh, for all of us, our goal uh, is to help facilitate mass adoption. You know, we want to see this technology in the hands of as many people as possible. And, uh, you know, right now there is still a steep learning curve for brand new users. There's technological hurdles. You know, it's hard. It, it, it's intimidating and overwhelming. And so, uh, you know, I love what you guys are doing in terms of making things easy. And people really don't understand, you know, if you've never used a non-custodial wallet, right. it's uh, when you first introduce the concept, it's terrifying because, you know, okay, to send crypto, you make one little mistake in the address and your funds are gone forever. If you forget your password, there's yeah. no forget password button to click on and get a new right. one email to you it's it, your assets are gone forever so yeah. uh there it's a whole different paradigm and it takes a little while to kind of wrap your head around it and it really helps yeah. to have a simplified intuitive experience when you're first entering the space so yeah absolutely i mean and and even i'm sure you guys are looking at your looking at for from a user experience right yeah and i think so many great developers have built amazing tech in this space without focusing on the user experience so just like oh you want to learn how to wall use wallets you got to write down seed phrases. You want to learn how to send assets. You just got to copy and paste and check every number, do a test send. And we've gone through that barrier just because, <laughs> you know, we're, we wanted to be early, wanted to get in, but the masses aren't going to do that. We've got to, we've got to make, build stuff that's easier. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and that's why I like to highlight projects and people that are making things easier too. Cause just like you mentioned the seed phrase, like there's quite a few companies that we've talked to recently that are building great things to where, that user doesn't have to stop and write down a seed phrase mm -hmm. somewhere, but they can still have a secure wallet. Yeah, yeah. No, it's critical. And we talk about like, you know, that's the thing, the difference between Web 2 and Web 3 is this self-custody and this decentralization. And it's, there's so many benefits and we are both, you know, big proponents of that, but there is a flip side too. And, and, and it requires some deep understanding to avoid, you know, big losses, right? Yeah. And there's too many yeah. horror stories already out there. I've um, got a few myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is for sure. That is for sure. Yeah. And you know, for sure, like while we're, you know, we're on Solana, even people who are already in the space, um, you know, most people are on Ethereum and and are somewhat familiar, but then to move to another chain, there's again another another learning curve. And you know, like you said, like a brand new user, I, I always think of it in terms of if you are uh, new to stock trading, you know, you go to E-Trade or Ameritrade or TD Price Waterhouse, you open an account, it's fairly intuitive. You know, you go through the process, you connect your bank account or your credit card to fund. If you run into a problem, there's a telephone number to call 24 seven for support. And uh, you know, there, there's some confidence there. And, and if yeah. you want to start crypto trading, you know, even yeah. in a centralized exchange, it's it's difficult enough. But yeah. God forbid you want to do decentralized trading. Right. You got to download MetaMask. You got to connect it. You know, to Uniswap. I mean, it's it's such a difficult process. So for sure, anything that we can do to make that simpler, to make it less scary for brand new users, will ultimately bring more people yeah. into the space and will help everybody. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I know you're interviewing me here, but let's go <laughs> yeah. back vice versa. Uh, let's talk about what Asvoria is doing because I've seen you guys all over the place. A <laughs> um, lot of stuff coming out and um, I'd like to know more about that. Yeah, for sure. So I, I you know, one thing that I keep hearing is that, uh, you know, we're, we're really raising awareness quickly and people are like, why haven't I heard of you before? And it's there's a reason is because we were very much head down developing for the, the project started four years ago. Uh, I joined about two years ago and we've been de developing the platform on Solana for the last two years. And we really wanted 
when the time came to, you know, to have our, our TGE uh, to really go out there with this kind of public awareness campaign, we wanted to have a lot of substance behind the hype, you know, and so we right. wanted, the platform is nearly complete. We have aspects of it launching in the next month, the NFT marketplace and a Solana launch pad to start with, plus the custodial wallet yeah. uh, for, again, for, for new users to make it easy. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's something that we were very adamant about. So I'm really excited about the fact that we're basically going live very soon. Yeah. But ultimately, we are an enhanced metaverse. You know, the, the term, as you know, kind of got corrupted over the last few years yeah. with meta and with, the, oh, with like that, anything else. else. Yeah. Like anything else. But, uh, you know, when Sandbox, I know four years ago at the peak of the last bull run, uh, their token was over $8. They had three billion, you know, they had a market cap of $25 billion with 30 active users yeah. and real, no real utility. And so yeah. that hype kind of poisoned the atmosphere a little bit. But the people that are still around in the space today have been developing through the bear market. And, you know, I always say that the value in any bull market is built during the previous bear. Absolutely. And uh, Zvoria is a perfect example of that. So um, uh, it's it's a metaverse that also has some significant B2B components and we're helping brands enter the space. Um, you know, I think it's inevitable that within a few years, every brand, every retailer, every business will have a, presence. a comprehensive presence in Web3. Just like with Web1, it took a little while before companies had websites and email. Web2, it took a little while before companies understood the value of Facebook and Twitter. Right, but today, it's impossible to imagine any yeah. brand without those things. Right. So the same thing will happen with Web3. These technology adoption cycles repeat themselves. So, um, you know, now is the and best time to enter the space. And that's what Asvori does is we kind of hold your hand and take you to the Web3 promised land and make things really simple for you. And you get to create a space for your community to engage in ways that were previously impossible. Nice. Um, and, and you can engage, you know, you can reward your community members directly for engagement. The people that are, are most active, the ones that contribute the most can be rewarded for their content and engagement. I mean, it, Web3, you know, that's the beauty of it. You own your content, so you monetize your engagement. Um, and there's just things that you can do with your community that were impossible before. So, yeah, yeah, I love to see all the things that are come out of that. I tell people all the time, just try it, like see what sticks, <laughs> see what works, right? Yeah. Uh, nobody's got the perfect roadmap of how the technology is going to be utilized, but we all know it's going to be utilized. Yeah. And um, I always tell you, I mean, take a look at history. Um, the hype cycles always come first, right? Mm -hmm. Think about the dot com mm -hmm. bubble. <laughs> I mean, that burst in two thousand one. Yeah. But what tech has been developed since? So you got the hype cycle, the bubble burst, but then the real emergence of the utility and more people adopt it. Yeah. And so it's easy to see that's where the hype cycles pass for, you know, metaverse had its hype cycle. Mm -hmm. Even NFTs have had their hype yes, cycle. Yeah. But the true tech, the true utilization is, is coming now. So, yeah, absolutely. Definitely it's, love to see what you guys Thank you both so much. <laughs> uh, running up on time. Sorry, everybody. Oh, but thanks, man. Yeah, we can talk about this all day for sure. Absolutely. So, we're going to have to get you together for a more long four fireside. Yeah, chat. definitely. Yeah. We, we, we need to actually, we've been talking about this a while. We need to go on each other's podcast. So, we'll, we'll definitely do that. Go on each other's podcast. Yeah. Get in touch with your projects. Yeah, good call. Yeah, absolutely. So Fio, you go to Fio.net. Um, you can connect to all our socials and our, our app, and then you can see all the different partners of where you can use Fio Protocol. Hoping to get Asphoria in there soon. Yep, definitely. Um, I went ahead and reserved Asphoria Fio domain for nice. you guys. Nice, perfect. So <laughs> figure out how to utilize that. <laughs> yeah, we definitely will. And uh, for Asphoria, you can go to Asphoria.io. Uh, that's uh, all of our information. Our Telegram channel is very active and we have great moderators so they can answer any of your questions. Uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, you can hit me up on Telegram. I am at NFT King. So it's uh, easy to remember, easy to find and uh, look forward to connecting. Thanks. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks, <laughs>